Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Pastor Greg Laurie points out our strength is found in the Lord and in the Lord alone. As we read in Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Take out the word Christ and put in another word and this collapses immediately. How about this? I can do all things through education that strengthens me. I can do all things through money. How about this one? I can do all things through politics that strengthen me. No, but we can do all things through Christ. This is the day when the lost are found. that you had the resources to handle anything, anything that came your way, would that change your outlook on life? Sometimes our demeanor is soured when life has been harsh and we feel there's nothing we can do about it. Today on A New Beginning, Pastor Greg Laurie brings some good news. You can have an attitude of contentment no matter what, because your Heavenly Father knows what you're facing and He has a plan to bring you through. All right, well, let's grab our Bibles and turn to the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians. And we're in our worldview series. And the title of the message today is The Biblical Worldview on Finding Contentment. Philippians chapter 4. And we're reading verses 10 to 13. Paul writes and he says, For I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity, not that I speak in regard to need. For I've learned in whatever state I'm in to be content. Underline that verse. I've learned whatever state I'm in to be content. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I've learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So that brings me to point number one if you're taking notes. Contentment comes when we rejoice in the Lord. Paul found contentment because he rejoiced in the Lord. Verse four of Philippians four, he says, rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. And by the way, that's a command as we pointed out in our last message. You're commanded to rejoice. It doesn't say Rejoice in circumstances, because sometimes it's hard. But rejoice in the Lord. Point number two, Paul found contentment because he took life as it came. You cannot control what comes your way in life. I've tried. It doesn't work. But I can control my reaction to it. I can control the way I think. I can control my attitude. That's why you learn this. You learn how to be content. Which brings me to point number three. Contentment does not come from what I have. It comes from who I know. Contentment does not come from what I have. It comes from who I know. Hebrews 13, 5 says, Let your way of life be without covetousness. But be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. See, because Christ will never leave me. I can be content. It's not about what I have. It's about who has me. And so Paul had found this contentment in his relationship with God. Point number four. Contentment comes from leaning on Christ, not leaning on yourself. Contentment comes from leaning on Christ, not leaning on yourself. Look at verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So Paul realized He needed God's help. Earlier in his book he writes to live as Christ and to die as gain. So Paul had experienced some hard times including being stoned. Not that kind of stoned. (laughs) Literal stoning with rocks. In fact he was probably killed. We know at some point Paul died. And many believe it was an incident in the book of Acts where he was stoned and thought of as dead and then came back to life. And so Paul had the unique experience of dying and going to heaven and coming back again. Imagine poor Paul. So he's stoned and he's 
hurtled into the presence of God and there is the Lord Jesus Christ who says, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And Paul's rejoicing in the Lord. I don't know what happened up there. But maybe the Lord said something like, hey Paul, I've got some good news and bad news. What's the good news? You're coming back again, Paul. Again, what do you mean again? You're going back to earth now, buddy. Oh no, no. I do not want to go back to earth, Paul. People are down there praying for you to be raised from the dead. Lord, don't listen to their prayers. <laughs> They're sinners. I don't want to go back to earth. I want to stay here. I know, Paul. But I have a work for you to do. And there he's back there and they're praying that he'd be raised. And, and the Lord gave many years, but the Lord also sent a thorn in his flesh. We don't know what it was. Some kind of a physical problem. Maybe a result of one of his beatings or stonings. Uh, maybe it was eyesight. That's what some commentators think. We don't know with certainty, but it was a continuing physical issue, it would appear. He described it as a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan sent to buffet him, lest he would be inflated with pride. So the Lord kind of kept him humble through life, but it kept him leaning on Christ and trusting in Christ. So he found this contentment. Now we come to a very important verse. Verse 13. Let's say it together. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let's say it one more time. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Don't you love that verse? The J.B. Phillips translation of that verse goes as follows. I'm ready for anything through the strength of the one who lives within me. I'm ready for anything. I can do all things through Christ. Now take out the word Christ and put in another word and this collapses immediately. How about this? I can do all things through drugs and alcohol that strengthen me. Is that true? <laughs> uh, when are people in Hollywood going to get this memo? I mean, we breathlessly follow their every move, their every tweet, their every post. Oh, they're so wonderful, we think. And then we hear of this one checking into a rehab clinic for the 10th time. And we read of this other one uh, getting another divorce. And then we read of another who overdoses on drugs. And then we read of some who commit suicide. And, and we don't understand that. Listen, Deep down inside, everyone is empty. Everyone is lonely. And everyone needs Jesus. Christ is the answer for everyone, not just some. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not drugs. How about this? I can do all things through education that strengthens me. Well, you can do some things with education. Getting a degree is a great thing. But he can only do some things through it. I can do all things through money. That strengthens me. You can do some things with money. Money is not evil. Some say, well, you know, the Bible says money is the root of all evil. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Which while some have coveted after, they've erred from the faith. Money is neutral. It can be used for God's glory. It can be used for evil. But you can't do all things through money. It has its limitations. Well, I can do all things through friends that strengthen me. Well, sometimes friends let you down. Sometimes friends abandon you. How about this one? I can do all things through politics that strengthen me. No. No. We can do some things through politics. And by the way, Christians should be involved in politics. We really should. Now this is not, well, I, I don't agree. I'm, look, we need to be involved in every part of culture. Every part. And every Christian should register and vote. And to not do that to me is a bit irresponsible. Maybe even worse. You know, we want to encourage men and women of God who want to do what they can in our nation's capital. There are good and godly people in Washington, D.C. And there are bad and ungodly people in Washington, D.C. So we want to be an influence where we can be. But we understand also we can only do some things through politics. But we can do all things through Christ. Christ is the answer. He's the answer for the future of America. Thanks for joining us for A New Beginning with Pastor Greg Laurie, Senior Pastor of Harvest Christian Fellowship in Riverside, California. 
In just a moment, Pastor Greg explains how contentment is tied to generosity. We'll see we're more content with what we give than what we get. More on that in a moment as Pastor Greg continues his message called The Biblical Worldview on Finding Contentment. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This verse pulls it all together. It brings the perfect balance. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It shows the place of God's power and it shows the place of our response. It does not teach that God does everything for the Christian, nor does it teach the Christian does everything for God. It teaches that God has given the power and resources I need and I must appropriate them. Listen, there's some things only God can do and some things only you can do. Only God can forgive you of your sin, but only you can repent of your sin. Only God can lead you, but only you can yield to his leading, so I have responsibility. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The flip side of that is a statement of Christ where he said, apart from me you can do nothing. Oh, without Christ, I can't live this Christian life. Without Christ, I can't help anyone really. Without Christ, I can't do much, but all things can be done through Christ who strengthens me. And that's good news. Last point now. Contentment does not come from getting, but giving. Contentment does not come from getting, but giving. Verse 19, my God will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. This is an oft quoted, yet perhaps misunderstood verse. We need to understand it doesn't just float out in space on its own because behind every promise of God there is a premise. Again, behind every promise of God there is a premise. What is a premise or the context? Well, the context of Philippians 4 is Paul is commending the believers for their generosity. Look at verse 17. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account Indeed, I have all in abound. I'm full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. Then he says, And my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Let me paraphrase that. Guys, I received your offering. Thanks so much. It meant a lot. I know it was sacrificial on your part, but I pray God blesses you for your generosity. So these are people that are giving and now he's offering them the promise God will supply all of their needs. I mentioned getting more stuff does not bring happiness or contentment. Now let me add another statement. Giving more stuff does. Giving more stuff does. Conventional wisdom says the more you get, the happier and more content you will be. The Bible says the more you give, the more happy and content you will be. Jesus said it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Or another way to translate that, it's more happy making to give than it is to receive. But let's broaden this. This doesn't just apply to finances. Maybe you're single and you're saying I'm lonely and I'm tired of them saying in the restaurant, party of one? Well, my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God can supply that person for you. Start praying for them. Maybe you're having marital problems. Well, I don't know how we're going to save this marriage. My God can supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Well, maybe you're having problems with your kids. My God can supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Maybe you need a physical touch from God because you've not been given any hope by the doctors. My God can supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. No, God doesn't heal everyone, but he heals many. And we should pray for his healing touch. The Bible says if there's any sick among you, call for the elders of the church who will pray and anoint them with oil and the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. If you need help in that way, let us know and we will pray for you. That's what we're here for. So the point is, is God will supply all the things that you need. So let's wrap this up. Happiness does not come from seeking self-fulfillment, but rather the fulfillment of others. Happiness does not come from seeking it, but from seeking God. Happiness and contentment do not come from getting 
They come from giving. No one has ever been honored for what they received, but rather for what they gave. You don't go to a person's funeral and have someone say, you know how much money this person made in life? Do you know how many cool things they had? Nobody cares about that. We want to know what they did. We want to hear about a charitable act, an act of kindness, uh, something they did for someone else. Those are the things we remember about one another. So we keep that in mind, that it's about discovering real contentment. Listen, it comes down to this. What you are looking for in life is a relationship with God. It's not going to be found in a thing. It's not going to be found in a accomplishment. It's not going to be found in fame. It's not going to be found in any outside exterior thing. It will be found in a relationship with God. Are you content? That's what I asked you in the beginning. Are you a happy person right now? Are you thinking, well, if I just had this, if I just had that? No. What you need is God. Tell me what you think you need. I'll tell you what you really want. It's Jesus. Tell me what you really want. I'll tell you what you really need. It's Jesus. It's Jesus that you're looking for. And he's here with us right now, standing at the door of your life, and he is knocking. And he is saying, if you'll hear his voice and open the door, he will come in. And I ask you in closing, have you asked Jesus Christ to come into your life to be your Savior and your Lord? Because the day you do that, your questions will be answered. The day you do that, you'll find the contentment you've been seeking in life. The day you do that is the day you change your eternal address, literally from hell to heaven. And he's ready to forgive you, but you must ask him to come into your life. You say, well, okay, how do I even do that? Through prayer. And I'm gonna lead you in that prayer if you want to pray it. So in a moment, we're gonna extend this opportunity. If you need Jesus today, if you wanna find contentment, and the guaranteed hope of heaven and find the meaning and purpose of life. It's here for you now. Let's pray. Father, I pray now for anyone here, anyone listening or watching that does not yet know you. Help them to see, Lord, how much you love them and help them to come to you and believe in Jesus who died on the cross for their sin and shed his blood for every evil, sinful thing they've done. Help them to believe in you today, we pray. Amen. Pastor Greg Laurie with an important closing prayer. And if you'd like to make a change in your relationship with the Lord, Pastor Greg says you can enter into a relationship with God right now. Yeah, they really can. That's the amazing thing. I think people are surprised that it doesn't take years to become a Christian. It doesn't take months. It doesn't take weeks. It doesn't take days. It doesn't even take hours. You can believe on the spot. And I would like to lead you in a prayer where you can ask for his forgiveness, a prayer where you can receive Jesus Christ into your life as your Savior and Lord. So if you want Christ to come into your life, if you want him to forgive you of your sin, if you want a second chance in life, if you want to go to heaven when you die, stop what you're doing and pray after me. These words, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner and I'm sorry for my sin and I turn from it now and I choose to follow you from this moment forward as Savior and Lord, as God and friend, Thank you for loving me and calling me and forgiving me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. And if you've just prayed with Pastor Greg and you've meant those words sincerely, your sins have been forgiven. The Bible says that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we want to help you get started living the Christian life. Let us send you Pastor Greg's New Believers Growth Pack. It's a collection of resources that will explain the basics of the Christian faith and get you started in this new journey. Just ask for a New Believers Growth Pack when you call 1-800-PRAY-FOR-ME. That's 1-800-PRAY-FOR-ME. 
772 936 and the team would love to pray with you too. Call 1-800-772-936 today. Next time on A New Beginning, Pastor Greg continues his enlightening series called Worldview with a look at what the Bible says about the afterlife. It's literally a life and death discussion. Today's message from Pastor Greg Laurie was called The Biblical Worldview on Finding Contentment. If you'd like to listen again, just download the free Vision Christian Media app where it's available as a podcast, along with more inspiring Christian content. Just search your app store for Vision Christian Media. Station sponsor. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.